Thank you. Um, my name is Elena Chavarria, and I am in. Uh, um, I am the teacher, as you want to tell like that, uh, of this um, module, and. I think that is uh, something that you know, uh, some topics that you already know, uh, but we are going to make reviews. We are going to practice um, some of the topics. We are going to um, learn something new. In this case, uh, for this uh, first class, uh, I wanted to know more about you, but in this case, I have some problems with the audio. So I can hear you, but we are going to talk about the <coughs> first topic. Um, por el problema de audio, no vamos a poder hablar un poco, o sea, no vamos a poder hablar entre nosotros, pero voy a presentar lo que es el primer tema. In this case, the first topic is the past tense. Vamos a hablar de pasado. Vamos a hacer un pequeño review. Vamos a hablar de algunas cosas eh, que tal vez ustedes ya conocen sobre este tema, pero eh, es necesario recordar. Uh, first, we have here something that I want to share with you. That is uh, this document in which we are going to work along the module. First, we have here um, a phrase that it says, be the change that you wish to see in the world. Sé el cambio que quieres eh, ver en el mundo. We are going to um, begin with us, uh, be the change. If I want to see something new, something special, something good in the world, I need to change myself first. And that is the uh, phrase for today and be the change that you wish to see in the world. Now, we have here the date of today, that is 17th. Uh, the topic is the past tense and some rules, if we can call them like that. Um, son algunas reglas, ¿verdad? Que vamos a tener en consideración a través de todas las eh, sesiones que vamos a tener. Uh, Number one, you must keep your microphone off. In this case, is because of the sound or um, when we want to participate, if we talk um, all of us um, at the same time, it's not going to work. So we need to uh, keep the microphone off just in case that we um, need to participate. We, want, we need to... Uh, have our microphone on. Next one, number two, please keep your camera on. This is very important. Um, we know that in this case, um, we need to uh, present or uh, have evidence of the participants of the class. In este caso, verdad, lo de la cámara es bastante importante y que también eh, <clears throat> que tomemos en consideración que tenemos que tener encendida nuestra cámara la mayor parte del tiempo, si se nos permite, ¿verdad? En este caso es porque nuestra computadora a veces se sobrecarga o el internet o algo eh, X, vamos a apagar la cámara, pero en la mayor parte del tiempo vamos a tratar de tenerla encendida. Number three, if you want to participate, please use the tool, raise your hand or eh, write a message in the chat to participate. Um, next one, be on time. Estar a tiempo, ¿verdad? Es bastante importante la puntualidad. Eh, si no um, eh, podemos hacerlo, podemos enviar un mensaje y decir, ah, I, I will be late because of my work, because of my classes, because or something else. But it's better to be on time to um, learn everything that we want to talk about in the class. Now, we are going to begin with the topic that is were versus was or a uh, past tense. Vamos a hablar sobre el were y el was como parte de lo que es el um, pasado, ¿verdad? El tiempo pasado. Just give me a moment before we can do this. Okay.
Now, we have here, what is, where, and was. We know that when we are talking about past, we uh, use uh, this form or this structure. Utilizamos esta estructura cuando hablamos del pasado, cosas que pasaron hace tiempo, ayer, antier, hace un año, dos años, etc. First, we need to talk about regular and irregular verbs. Why? Because we need to know what kind of words, what kind of actions, what kind of structure we are going to use to talk about past. Es importante que nosotros eh, ya sepamos manejar un poco lo que son los verbos regulares e irregulares. Creo que eso se habla desde siempre, ¿verdad? A la hora de eh, practicar o aprender inglés. In this case, when we are going to talk about um, verbs, we have two kind of verbs, the regular and the irregular. What are those? Um, the regular verbs are those verbs that end with ed at the end of the word. Los verbos regulares son aquellos que terminan en ed. We know that verbs are actions that we perform every day. Los verbos son acciones que nosotros hacemos todos los días. Like walk, eat, study, write, etc., etc. Son acciones, cosas que nosotros hacemos todos los días. Caminar, correr, saltar, comer, etc. In this case, in English, we have two types. The first one are the regular verbs that end in ed. Then we have the irregular verbs that change the form, not just the end, change all the form. We're going to write down some examples. Some examples of regular and irregular verbs. Let's see. We have here, Regular. Let me see. We need to separate them. Okay. Let's see, what are those regular verbs? Just like examples. We have here, number one, act. This is the uh, base form, la base o la forma base del verbo, act. When we are uh, writing down in a uh, past is the same root, Acted. Termina con ed. Esos verbos, si ustedes se fijan, tenemos acá la forma base que es act. Lo volvemos a repetir aquí a este lado. Act. Just the end is different. That is making or letting know uh, that is in past. Then we have vague. Bake, bake it. Next one, we have close, close, dress, dress it, right? That are regular verbs. What happens with irregular verbs? ¿Qué pasa con los verbos irregulares? We have here some examples. Become. Became. In this case, we are going to change a little bit. Became. Vamos a cambiarlos un poco. Ahí ya no son iguales. Ya no termina en ed, sino que se cambia un poco la forma en la que se escribe. Begin. 
began. Then, blow, blue. So if we want to uh, write in past, we need to uh, make sure that we know something about verbs because we are going to use them uh, to talk about past actions or things that we did in the past. But in this case, it is just like a review. Es un pequeño review o recordatorio de más o menos, ¿verdad? De este tema de los verbos. Siempre los vamos a utilizar y los vamos a ir viendo un poco más adelante. Lo vamos a ir desglosando poco a poco. Pero en este caso, vamos a uh, talk about was and where. In this case, we need was in where there are the paths of V. Now, first, in which uh, cases we uh, use was and where? You know that we have the pronouns. That is the first thing that we need to know. Pronouns, los pronombres. We know that we have I, you, he, she, it, we, again, you, and they. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. Those are the pronouns, the subjects, the, per, the person of the people. Ahí tenemos lo que son los pronombres. Son nuestro sujeto, la persona que hace las acciones, o de quien nosotros estamos hablando en una conversación. In this case, we are going to separate them. Which of those use was and which of those use where? In this case, we have here I. We use was, then we use where again we use was she was was again it was we were we were where you were they were they were and the last one oh. Oh my God. ahí tenemos con eso vamos a estar nosotros utilizando was and where let me have this a little bit bigger now we have here the singulars and the plural this one is singular because this is talking about one person singular this is also singular and we have here plural two or more people Okay. We have here singular and plurals. This is something that I think that you already know or have uh, listened to this uh, before. Entonces, tenemos los pronombres. Sabemos con cuáles vamos a utilizar was, con cuáles vamos a utilizar where, cuáles son los singulares y cuáles son los plurales. Are you, is she, it, singular, one, person we you and they plural two or more people entonces estamos diciendo que los primeros que tenemos nosotros ahí son los singulares porque hablan de una sola persona y los últimos son los plurales porque hablamos de dos o más personas now we have this here and i want to write some examples Number one, I was excited. I was excited. 
Estaba emocionado. I is me subject. Was is the verb that I am using in past. That is uh, the main um, topic that we are talking about tonight. And excited. The verbs that I said you before that we are going to know that is an um, regular verb. En este caso tenemos, ¿verdad? Ahí el ejemplo. Luego tenemos en el número dos, lo vamos a poner por acá. Number two. I wasn't. I wasn't excited. It's the same sentence, but in this case, it is negative. The first one is positive. We are going to write here. Positive and here negative. Positive and negative. I was excited. Estaba emocionada. I wasn't excited. No estaba emocionada. Another one. Number three. He was at school. At school. Él estaba en la escuela. He was at school. And I want to write it in negative. He wasn't at school. Él no estaba en la escuela. And we have positive and negative sentence. Using was and wasn't, that is the, the negative form. Another one, number four. It was a beautiful night. It was a beautiful night. It was a beautiful night. Fue una noche muy bonita, una noche hermosa. But if, if I want to write it in negative, Again, is the same. Just change the nut. It was, um, it wasn't, this day wasn't a beautiful nut. It wasn't a beautiful night. In this case, if we see this, That is the difference between the positive and the negative form. Because in the positive, just write was, but in this case, we add the not. Wasn't and was. And with where you were brilliant. Tú eras brillante. Y en negativo, you weren't brilliant. No eras brillante. In this case, we are uh, using a uh, simple sentences, oraciones simples. Just with the subject, with the was and were, and with uh, the complement. Estamos utilizando solo lo que es el subject, el sujeto, el was y el were, y el complemento para hacer oraciones simples. No estamos haciendo oraciones complicadas, estamos haciendo oraciones bastante simples para iniciar con lo que es, ¿verdad? El... Eh, lo que es el tema del de pasado, ¿verdad? In this case, it's the past tense. Now, that we are going to um, learn more about the topic, but let me check the chat. ¿Hay ruido y no se escucha bien o se escucha interferencia? Right now, escucha. 
are you listening well or you can hear something noisy or something else? Se me puede inscribir en el chat porque no he arreglado lo del, lo del sonido. ¿Se escucha bien en este momento? ¿O tenemos algún problema para escuchar? ¿Se escucha bien? Okay. Yes, I can hear you very well. Ok, good. At this point, something that you need to say, algo que quieran decir, some uh, questions, you can write it in the chat to clarify some questions right now. Something that you want to say, some questions, or um, right now everything is okay. Everything is okay. Los micrófonos. Okay. Um, some of you are saying that there is uh, some noise in the in the class. So please, um, microphone off. Necesitamos apagar los micrófonos porque uh, están diciendo que a veces hay mucho ruido, así que recordemos de revisar nuestros micrófonos para no estar eh, haciendo como interferencia porque no todos van a escuchar bien si tenemos los micrófonos encendidos. Así que mientras está haciendo las explicaciones, podríamos apagar nuestros micrófonos eh, en ese momento para que todos podamos escuchar bien la, eh, lo que es verdad la explicación. Everything is okay. Right. We are going to continue. Now, before reading some other examples, we need to talk about the difference or the structure. We are going to talk about a structure. Vamos a hablar de la estructura para utilizarlo. Ya vimos acá algunos ejemplos, pero vamos a ver una estructura como tal. How can I write sentences using was and where? Well, we need the structure that is very important. The structure. La estructura para que nosotros podamos realizar oraciones. Okay. First, we have positive. 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 And we have pronoun. Plus was or where plus complement. Pronoun plus was, where, and complement. Así de fácil. Esa es la estructura. Primero el pronombre, luego was o where, y por último el complemento. Pero ¿cómo podemos hacer para ver mejor eso? Un ejemplo, I es el pronombre. Then we have was and the complement, happy. I was happy. In this case, we have here the structure. The first one is the pronoun and we have here the pronoun I. Then was or where, And we have was because we are using I. That is first person in singular. Then we have the complement that is happy. A really short sentence, una oración bastante corta. The pronoun I was where it was and complement happy. I was happy, estaba feliz. Then we have another example. Let's see. He was, he, in this case, we are changing the color. He, again, was. We are going to change the color like this. And the compliment, he was hungry. He was hungry. Él estaba hambriento. We are, follow, uh, we are following the structure, right? 
Then another one. She. We are not changing the color this time. She was a nurse. Ella era una enfermera. You were early. Llegaste temprano o estabas temprano o estuviste temprano. You were at the school. You were at the school. Estabas en la escuela o estuviste en la escuela. They were quiet. Ellos estaban en silencio. Then we have some examples using the structure of the positive. Ahí nosotros tenemos los eh, del positivo, ¿verdad? De eh, la estructura positiva. Then we are going to use the negative. Negative. Ahora tenemos la estructura para los negativos. The structure is kind of similar. Pronoun plus was where some changes here not plus here is plus, plus. not and complement. This is the structure for the negative form. It's kind of similar. It's casi lo mismo. Just we are adding this one here, the not. That is saying that we are making negative statements or negative sentence. En este caso, el not nos está diciendo nosotros que tenemos una oración negativa. Todo lo demás es igual, solo le agregamos el not para cambiar lo que es nuestra oración. Algunos ejemplos. I wasn't, I wasn't sad. In this case, we have this one. Let me show you this one. Wasn't. This. This is the same as we have here. Was not. Is the same. Es lo mismo. Solo es una eh, forma de escribirlo más fácil o más rápido, pero es lo mismo. Podemos escribirlo de las dos formas. Wasn't o was not. Is the same. Next example. He it's wasn't better. thirsty. Right. He wasn't thirsty. Then we have he or oh, we weren't. We weren't late. But in this case, it's the same as wasn't. This one is weren't. It's the same with were not. Y ahí tenemos la estructura para lo que es la oración negativa. Bastante sencillo, bastante simple. No hay mucho para donde perdernos. Pronoun plus was were plus not plus complement. Now we have third one questions. We can make questions using was and where. In this case, we are going to change something um, really important. In this case, we have almost the same structure, but with little differences. Let's say. Um, we have here, in the question, we need to place uh, was and where are the first place. Was, where. Vamos a utilizar el was y el where al inicio de la pregunta. Ya no lo vamos a utilizar en el segundo lugar. Lo vamos a utilizar en el primer lugar. Then we have the pronoun. 
we have here the complement. And we have the question mark. In this case is this one, I guess. Oh my God. I can find it, this one. Now we have here the uh, structure. Para las preguntas, es la misma estructura, solo que cambiamos el primer y segundo lugar. En la positiva y en la negativa, en nuestro primer lugar teníamos el pronombre. Era eh, lo más importante, right? El pronombre. In this case, we have the was and were at the first place. Just a little change. Importante, cuando hacemos preguntas, siempre al final le agregamos un signo de interrogación. So, we have some examples to see the difference between the positive um, sentence with the question. Here, we have the first one. They were, this is not the question. Esta no es la pregunta. They were happy. Now, we need to write like this. The question, were they happy? And the question mark, like this. It's the same sentence. So we need to look at this. Let me see. Okay. Here, the changes. We change the places. Cambiamos los lugares. And add something at the end. Agregamos algo al final. Es la misma oración. Solo que cambiamos la estructura para hacer una pregunta. Then we have another example. Here we have another example. Let's see. Was she, was she rich? This is another question. And we have the short answers for these questions. Para esas preguntas, nosotros hacemos eh, respuestas cortas, respuestas cortitas. How can we eh, answer these questions? Short answers, the first one is yes, and the second one is not. Yes, they were, or no, no, they weren't. Sencillas eh, respuestas cortas, ¿verdad? No necesitamos agregar mucha información a esas eh, respuestas, sino que son short answers. Eh, son yes, no questions, así que no necesitamos agregar más información. Sí, no, y eso es todo. At this point, everything is okay? Something that you need to, uh, more explanation or something like that? ¿Estamos bien hasta el momento o necesitamos una explicación de alguna parte en específico? Let me see. Everything is okay. Okay. Good. Nice. Thank you. It's clear. Thank you. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, okay. Let's continue. Okay. Now. We have here the question with was and where, but we have another way to make questions. Eh, nosotros ya vimos acá una forma de ver eh, o de hacer algunas preguntas, pero también tenemos otra forma de hacer preguntas. ¿Y cuál es esa forma? Just let me check this. Okay.
Okay. We have the WH words. Para hacer preguntas, nosotros también tenemos las WH words, que son aquellas palabras que inician con WH, que son muy comunes, ¿verdad? En inglés. Y las vamos a utilizar acá. In this case, another way to make questions. Okay, WH words. We have where, why, and when. We are going to use these three. Vamos a utilizar solo estas tres en, eh, por el momento. Where, why, and when. Then we have the structure, class, was and where. Class, subject, class, complement, and something important, the question mark. Aquí tenemos nuestra estructura con WH words. WH word plus was, word plus subject plus complement. The first one, where. In this case, I'm going to use was. Where was I, he, she, it? I, he, she, and it. All of them. The complement, sick. And the question mark. Where was I sick? Where was he sick? Where was she sick? Then why? Why were? In this case, I am going to use were. We, you, or they. We, you, they. Higher. And the last one again with was. Esta es la forma de hacer preguntas también con las WH uh, words using in the first place, the WH word, then we are going to use the was and were and the subject, in this case, in, is in the third place. El subject lo pasamos para el tercer lugar. Ya no queda ni en el segundo ni en el primero, sino que en el tercero, porque ya estamos utilizando un inicio para nuestra pregunta con una WH word. Luego dejamos lo que es nuestro verbo pasado, was, were, y ponemos nuestro subject in third place and the complement, whatever we want to write or whatever we want to uh, ask. Lo que nosotros queramos preguntar. Lo vamos a poner en el complemento y siempre cerramos con una question mark that is really important to remember. Because sometimes when we are writing, um, we forget to write the, um, the symbols or something like that. Siempre que vamos a escribir una oración, siempre que vamos a escribir una pregunta, que no se nos olvide escribir lo que son los signos de puntuación. Porque a veces se nos pasa por alto. Ah, se me olvidó ponerle el punto, se me olvidó ponerle eh, el question mark. Pero eso hace una gran diferencia, así que siempre tenemos que recordar que se escriben al final de las oraciones. Ya sea en oraciones negativas, positivas o en pregunta. Then we have another way to write a sentence in past. No solo tenemos el was y el where, no solo tenemos las WH words, que ya son dos formas de hacer preguntas, sino que también tenemos el uso de did, that is in past. Make questions 
or we are talking about, we are going to use did. Vamos a utilizar did, que es el pasado de do. Did. Vamos a ver cómo lo utilizamos y cómo nos puede servir para hablar del pasado. Tenemos la estructura. Vamos a seguir usando estructuras. Es más fácil cuando tenemos las estructuras. In this case, the first place is the subject. Class. Verb. In this case, is the verb. No was, no where. In past. And we have the complement. Now, we are not use just was and were. Aquí no vamos a utilizar solo el was y el were, sino que también vamos a utilizar los verbos en pasado. En este caso, vamos a utilizar lo que ya les decía, de los verbos irregulares y los verbos regulares. Por eso es importante que siempre tengamos nosotros a la mano nuestros verbos regulares e irregulares. Um, I'm going to share with you a list of the regular and irregular verbs. Um, after the class, I guess. Voy a compartirles en el grupo una lista de verbos regulares e irregulares para que ustedes siempre los tengan. No sé si ya los tienen, pero es necesario que siempre los tengamos a la mano eh, para escribir lo que son este tipo de oraciones. In this case, we are going to use some eh, examples with the verbs. The first example is I move to. San Francisco last year. Here we have the verb in past. That is, we are going to talk about the verbs. I moved to San Francisco last year. Me moví o me fui para San Francisco el, el año pasado. Ahí es donde yo estoy utilizando mi verbo en pasado. Estoy hablando de cosas que yo hice en el pasado using the verbs, not just was and were using all the actions. Then we have the negative statement because this is uh, the positive. Positive. Just remembering. Then we have the negative. That is the semi structure. Just in this case, we are going to use D. So let me have this here. Here we are going to change this. The and we are going to add not. This is the auxiliary. We, we are going to use or know this as the auxiliary. Vamos a ponerlo por acá. Did es un auxiliar, es el que nos va a ayudar a nosotros a poner nuestra oración en pasado, no el not, el did, nos ayuda a nosotros a poner lo que es nuestro o nuestra oración en pasado. Then, we add here the verb. En este caso, si nos fijamos, tenemos el did, que viene del verbo do, pero en este caso no nos va a servir a nosotros como el main verb sino que nos sirve como auxiliar. Por eso le llamamos auxiliar, porque no nos está sirviendo como el verbo original de nuestra oración. In this case, we have here the example. Uh, let me see. I didn't, the same, the same uh, sentence of the first example. I didn't or I did not move to San Francisco last year. Si nos fijamos, aquí tenemos el D, again, y el verbo move. In this case, we are not changed or no changing the verb. No vamos a cambiar el verbo. ¿Por qué no vamos a cambiar nosotros este verbo si necesitamos hablar de una acción en pasado? ¿Por qué yo no la voy a cambiar si en el primer ejemplo yo lo puse en pasado? 
Oh, it's because of the auxiliary. Es por el auxiliar. El auxiliar me está dando a mí la pauta de saber que yo ya tengo mi oración en pasado. En ese caso, yo ya tengo mi oración en pasado, yo ya no necesito poner mi verbo en pasado en este caso. Entonces, cuando yo utilice el auxiliar bien, yo ya no voy a poner mi verbo en pasado porque yo ya tengo algo que me está diciendo que mi, mi oración ya está en pasado. In this case, did is the auxiliary that um, helped me to know that I am talking about the past. And the verb or the action is in infinitive. O sea, está en infinitivo en su forma base. No hay ningún eh, cambio con el verbo porque yo ya tengo mi auxiliar. Then, we have, again, the questions, the structure to make questions. Let's see. We have the WH words, again, WH words. Plus, did, plus, subject, plus, verb, plus, complement. This is a little bit longer. This is un poco más largo. WH word, plus did, plus subject, plus verb, plus complement. Tenemos. When, cuando, did. Ya tenemos aquí la pauta de que está en el pasado, ¿verdad? When did you, de nuestro subject, move? Again, the verb in uh, infinity. When did you move to San Francisco? ¿Cuándo te moviste a San Francisco? ¿Cuándo te fuiste a San Francisco? And this one is an open question. Esta es una pregunta abierta. Open question. This is different from was and where. Why? Those are yes, no questions. Let me see. Um, no, did is not used only in negative. Uh, no solo utilizamos el did en negativo, sino que cuando ya le agregamos el not, es porque ya lo estamos utilizando en negativo, lo podemos utilizar en lo que es positivo y en el, también en las interrogativas, en las preguntas. Sino que ahí estamos haciendo como el, la diferencia, ¿verdad? Pero el did básicamente es el auxiliar que nos permite hacer oraciones en eh, pasado, no solo utilizando was and were, o los verbos en pasado sino que nos da la pauta, no solo es en negativo, se puede utilizar en, en positivo y en interrogativas también. Entonces, decíamos acá, when did you, ahí tenemos, que en, esta, en este tipo de preguntas podemos nosotros dar nuestras respuestas de tres, cuatro líneas. Oh, I moved to San Francisco last month because of my work. Or because my family wanted to move to that city. Yo puedo explicar, dar un, una explicación de por qué me fui para allá. Y yo puedo decir muchas cosas sobre eh, la respuesta que yo quiero dar in these kind of questions, because they are open. Están abiertas a las, eh, a las respuestas, ¿verdad? Podemos hablar mucho en este tipo de eh, questions. In this case, When I use these kind of questions, did you take, did you take English classes before? Aquí ya no tengo WH word. Aquí ya tengo solo el D. Aquí esta es la que va adelante. Did and the verb take in this case. Tomaste clases de inglés antes. That era, is a yes, no, o no, yes, question. In this case, the yes, no, question. Estas son un poco más cerradas porque nos están preguntando algo puntual. Tomaste clases de inglés antes, sí o no. Yo no le puedo decir, ah, oh, 
I guess I did pay English classes before and I think they were really funny because no, that is not the point of this question. I just have to say yes or not. Yes, I did or no, I didn't. En ese tipo de preguntas yo solo puedo decir sí o no, así, puntual. No voy a explicar todo lo que yo quiero explicar sobre las clases de inglés de antes, sino que sí, no. And that's all. That is the difference between open question and yes, no question. The answer, that is the difference, the kind of answer that I'm giving to the people that is asking me something. In the open question, I can talk about everything I want to say, but in the yes, no question, I just have to say yes or not as my answer. Y eso es todo. No puedo agregar más, sino que simplemente sí, no, y eso es todo. En la otra sí puedo hablar un poco más, pero eh, son las diferencias entre los inicios, the WH question and the deep. Now, um, because of the time, it's almost time to finish the class, but I need to think about a nationality. Necesito que piense sobre una nacionalidad. Um, here I have a map. Here, I have a map like this. I need you to think. Tomorrow we have um, another session. So okay. right now I need you to think in a country that you really like. Un país que les guste mucho. And we are going to create a nationality. Vamos a crear una nacionalidad que nos represente a nosotros. La nacionalidad que ustedes quieran. Eh, esta actividad la vamos a hacer al inicio de mañana. Um, vamos a crear una nacionalidad que nos represente Y vamos a hacer preguntas sobre eso. We have one question and I want to write it down because I need you to know what is the question. Let me see. Let me. What is the meaning? A what is the meaning? Like this. I have a question. Miss. Miss. Question. And this is my question for tomorrow. Miss, where were you born? Hello. Where were you born? Donde nacieron? Nosotros vamos a um, Evelyn. I want you to write your question. Necesito que escribas tu pregunta because I can hear your voice right now. As you can hear me in the chat, please. Vamos a crear entonces nuestra nacionalidad de cualquier país del mundo. And the question is, where were you born? ¿Dónde naciste? Esa va a ser nuestra pregunta para abrir la eh, sesión el día de mañana. Vamos a preguntar al azar eh, dónde nacieron, ¿verdad? Según el país que ustedes escogieron. Oh, something really important that I want to say uh, right now because of the time. Um, ustedes ya saben que tienen que trabajar en la plataforma, right? Uh, you can work in the platform all the um, activity that you want. Ustedes pueden trabajar todas las actividades que ustedes quieran en la plataforma. Ustedes pueden um, adelantarse si quieren. Si ustedes ven, ah, this is really easy for me. Esta es una actividad bastante sencilla. Yo puedo ir avanzando eh, lo más que pueda en la plataforma. It's like a, an advantage that you have to work in, um, in some activities, uh, not just the, the one in this class. Pueden trabajar en todas las que quieran y así van avanzando. Y cuando ya vengamos a las sesiones, pues si tenemos dudas de las actividades que hemos estado realizando en la plataforma, pues ahí la vamos a ir solventando. Let me see this. My name is Elena Chavarria. 
is Elena. Elena is my name. Damn. And if you have some troubles with the activities in the platform, you can ask in the group and I will help you with uh, some explanation or something like that. Ustedes pueden escribir en el grupo si tienen algún problema con alguna de las actividades. Um, because I know that the platform is uh, have to, like um, some rules to write the answers. Um, El, a veces en la plataforma, cuando nosotros escribimos mal alguna palabra o no ponemos los signos de puntuación, a veces no nos vale las respuestas. Entonces, eh, a veces nos trabamos con algunas actividades porque decimos, si yo lo estoy escribiendo bien, ¿por qué no me la pone buena? Entonces, eh, when you have that kind of trouble with the exercise, you can write in the group, help me, I need uh, some, someone that, that help me with that um, exercise. And uh, I will uh, text you and I will explain something about the, um, the platform. Así que si tienen problemas o necesitan algo de la plataforma, pueden escribir en el grupo y vamos a tratar de ayudarnos entre todos, ¿verdad? A avanzar lo más que podamos en lo que son las actividades. So, remember, for tomorrow, we, um, we are going to open the session uh, talking about the question, where were you born? Hi, Maria Jose. It's nice to meet you. Um, I guess for tomorrow I will um, mention your names because um, I'm going to um, be a little familiar with you. So I will ask saying your name. Porque no nos hemos presentado muy bien because of the, of the audio. But I guess and I hope tomorrow is a better day to um, use uh, the app and the voice is, I can hear your voice because it's a really, I don't know. Es un poco incómodo no escuchar las participaciones. Pero voy a solventar el problema para el día de mañana. I guess now it is time to say goodbye. Uh, have a good night. It's a really nice um, moment to be here. And I am really glad to have um, all work with you. So see you tomorrow um, Hi, Maria, at the same time. And that's everything. If you want to say something, you can say something right now in the chat. If not, good night, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye bye, Mario. Good night, everybody. Okay. Bye. See you tomorrow. Mm-mm-mm. <clears throat>